you hadn't used any of the, the, the Windows-based devices. Why, why is that? Well, I have to buy them, it uh, turns out. Okay. It's these devices. trash fire city in the front end launcher department. Well, do you know a noted game critic Jeffrey Grubb over at GiantBomb.com? Oh, oh yeah, Jeff's been a fixture in the industry for a long time. His speed runs, everything from speed runs to his old PUBG family dinners. He's been around for a long time. A little bit crotchety sometimes though. Oh, you know, one of the things he is crotchety about is Windows on handheld gaming devices. Now, I love handheld gaming devices. I use both Windows and the Steam Deck. Will, you, you've mostly just used the Steam Deck, right? I will tell you, the day that the Steam Deck was announced, I pre-ordered one, and then I got it in like June of 2022, 2021, Took years later. Yeah, Took yeah. a minute. But I've been thrilled with it. It's, I've been a longtime handheld gamer, starting with like the Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, all the way through the Nintendo, all the way through to the Switch. Love it. The Vita, the PSP, I, like, I'm down for a handheld uh, device. Partly because I spend a lot of time traveling, but partly because I like to sit on the couch and play games. Which, why I was uh, surprised that when, when you started to come over here and, and working with us, that uh, you hadn't used any of the, the, the Windows-based devices. Why, why is that? Well, I have to buy them. It turns uh, out. Okay. Yeah, yeah. so well, that, that, that changes things. <laughs> yeah, you make, you make decisions. <laughs> well, luckily, uh, I'd let you borrow a couple, mm -hmm. uh, notably the, uh, the Asus ROG Ally and the Lenovo Legion Go uh, to use for a bit to kind of compare and contrast. And, and uh, once again, obviously, Jeff uh, is kind of in the camp of Windows should not be on handheld gaming devices, and it sucks. Uh, I'm actually a believer in Windows on uh, handheld gaming devices, so that's why I kind of want to get your take on this whole thing. So walk me through the journey. Well, so generally speaking, so I hadn't spent any time with Windows on handhelds in, in a really, really long time. You know, back in the, the old days, in the early 2010s, there were oh. some Windows handhelds out of China that you could play games on, run emulation on. The olden days. Not at all like the modern uh, big picture <laughs> experience on a, on a current handheld. Okay. I, I feel like uh, it, it kind of, the framing of how I feel about these depends on where I come from. If I'm a handheld gamer who wants to pick up a device and press the button and have the game just work and not have to fool with it and not have to like navigate the Windows desktop UI with my finger or some kind of janky uh, gamepad mm -hmm. mouse controller. I, I see where Jeff's coming from, right? Like the Windows devices are Windows computers that you can play games on and have gamepads attached. I mean, yeah, they're, they're like laptops with controllers buckled on the screen and no keyboard. Yeah, Actually, I, some of them do have keyboards, like the, the GPD ones. That just seems, <laughs> yeah. e it's not making it better, Adam. <laughs> yeah. The, so the thing, the thing that struck me using the Windows devices, and I kind of, I've been using them for about three weeks now, off and on. I've been switching back and forth between the Steam Deck, so I have some kind of keep coming back to the control to my original point of comparison. Mm -hmm. And I, like, I don't, I, I don't think that the, for me personally, is the way I play games on the on the handheld. I'm not a huge fan of the Windows as it is now on mm -hmm. the on the handhelds. Now, I think if there was a version of Windows that was good at handhelds. That would be a little bit of a different story. Yeah, well, I mean, which we've talked about. There's rumors that maybe they'll have a, a, a slim client or some sort of front end launcher. You know, I, but we don't know. It's it's not here yet. Uh, so a lot of these a lot of these companies, uh, because there is no official version of Steam OS uh, or the the version that's on the Steam Deck available for these, they just default to Windows. Uh, I mean, there has been talk. Some of them are like, oh yeah, we'll try something different. But usually they just default to Windows. So. Yeah, I, I I guess like I understand that you have some complaints. I, I want to work through through some of these yeah. and kind of maybe understand why I actually don't think those are complaints uh, for the most part. But the first one, I mean, the I think the major one people always talk about is is compatibility, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the, the Steam Deck is running Linux, and be be for for many different reasons the, the game either just won't play because of some anti-cheat or something like that, or maybe it just runs uh, poorly. Luckily, Valve has been able to do a lot of work on the back end to kind of get Windows-based games to run good on, on Linux, but like, what, where, do you, where do you feel in compatibility? Do you, do you feel like there were games that you were like, oh man, I can't play this on the Steam Deck, that really sucks. So, you know, the compatibility thing was much more of an issue early on. Now that they've sold a few million units of the Steam Deck, developers are actively courting the Steam Deck audience, at least if they're launching on Steam. Mm -hmm. There are still some notable holdouts, you know, okay. games like Fortnite, where Epic is probably never going to update EAC for the Linux compatible version <laughs> of Fortnite for some, I think, probably reasons that have nothing to do with the game and more to do with the ecosystem choices. Oh, okay. Um, you, you know, I think they don't want to compete with Steam on their devices, right? Mm, which is okay. which is fair. The games that I that don't play on it are typically the games that I don't want, either because of performance or because of anti-cheat uh, or DRM. 
Helldivers 2 is a perfect example. It mm. came out a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. They launched it with a non-Linux compatible version of their anti-cheat software. Mm -hmm. The next, the third patch, within the week, they'd updated it to be the Linux compatible version oh, of their wow. anti-cheat okay. firmware. <laughs> that was like, quick. The Steam Deck audience is large and vocal, and developers are listening now. So a lot of the problems that we hit early on just don't exist anymore. Huh, okay. The exception are the games that are non-performant on the Steam Deck, which is a similar problem that most of the Windows handhelds have. They're a little bit more performant APUs generally than the Steam Deck has, mm -hmm. but they're not. you're not going to run path tracing on any of these handhelds at this point. No, no. Well, but, I mean, Cyberpunk has a literal preset in there that says Steam Deck. You know, That's so true. Cyberpunk, you know. Uh, which is a, a pretty a pretty intense game to play, regardless of ray tracing or not, uh, you know. But you know what's better than that Steam Deck preset? What? Running it on my desktop PC <laughs> in the other room with a 4090 and a 13900K and streaming it across the network to my living room. Which is nice. Yes. But, but also, that exists on Windows. And I will say, it's a place where the Windows handhelds, because they are the more capable hardware, the, the Ally with 120 hertz display, hmm is a pretty good streaming experience compared to the Steam Deck. Oh, and, and I've actually used things like GeForce Now uh, you know, on, on a lot of these Windows devices uh, you know, and, and had really good results. It depends on your, your internet connection and your Wi-Fi set up in, you know, in your house or whatnot, but I've had good experiences. Yeah, and, and I've, I set up Moonlight and Sunshine, the old game stream, GeForce Game Stream streaming server and client, mm. respectively. And like they, they work great on the devices. You can set them up as a non-Steam app. You just launch into it and you have access to your full Windows desktop in the other room. The, 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 now the price of that 120 hertz high resolution display is that the battery life is a little bit rough. Yeah. It's, it's less noticeable on the streaming games because the streaming takes, the streaming essentially you're turning off the GPU, you're turning off the CPU, you're only doing a little bit of video decode and encode. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and you know, the battery life on the Steam Deck goes from two hours to six or eight hours. I, I mean, especially on the OLED <laughs> version, battery life has been a, a nice uptick for, for damn sure. I, like, I don't think, even even the uh, of the handhelds I have here, I mean, some of them, like this Ionia Kuhn has a, a very, very large battery mm -hmm. for sure. But I mean, yeah, you're still talking about, you know, maybe on par with the Steam Deck OLED, but nothing nothing that's just like, oh yeah, hands down, beats the Steam Deck OLED all day, all night. I mean, I think I think the place that I ended up is that when you're streaming, I, I mostly did the streaming with the Ally. Mm. The Ally or the Steam Deck, you're probably gonna run out of hand, hand you're gonna be <laughs> hand fatigued before you run out of battery if you're streaming from your PC or Maybe. from GeForce Now or something yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was gonna say, uh, another point on the battery though, when you're playing games locally, the, the, the reason why I don't really care, and I mean, I care when it comes to traveling. Because uh, mm -hmm. when I travel, which I mean, I don't do a ton, maybe like once a quarter or something, you know, I'll be like, oh, you know, I, I need to get this on a plane. I 100% go to the Steam Deck. Uh, it's just the one I'm, I'm most comfortable with. I think it, it works the best in, in airplane mode, whatever, a lot of reasons. But for battery at home, I'm sitting on my couch in front of the TV. Usually my wife is watching something else. That's how I usually like to play handheld gaming. Yeah. And I've got a wall plug right there. So I, almost 95% of the time, I'm just plugged into the wall. So like, I do, I do not care about battery life. Oh, see, I don't, I don't, I, I'll plug in when it complains, but uh, I'll let it run all the way down to 3% when it's like, hey man, you gotta plug this in. Or you, Cause you're, you're not close to a wall or you don't- No, like the, I don't wanna be encumbered. Uh, okay. I live a wireless life, man. It's the uh, 21st century. Okay, well, but especially when you're plugged in, <laughs> you, you get a little bit of a performance boost on the, the Ally as well. So I'd like to tap into that. I'm gonna tell you something about the games that I play on a mobile mm -hmm. device. Mm -hmm probably doesn't matter that much. Hmm. Like if I'm playing Tunic, Tunic's a lovely game. If I'm getting a solid 60, I'm probably good. Or, or, or a 40. I, I feel or, like 40, 40 is, a, yeah. is a baseline, right? I yeah. usually target 40, and if I can get more than that, great. Uh, I, look, at, I've been a big proponent of 40 hertz on mobile for a long time. It feels like 60, but it does battery like 30, yeah. so you know. Well, I, I will say that was one advantage that the Ally did have and a lot of these other handheld devices is one 120 hertz is way better than 60 hertz on the original Steam Deck. But the OLED changed that, now it's up to 90. Mm -hmm. But th that was, a, that was a, oh wow, okay, 120 on here is actually pretty nice. But, but again, I'm really, because I do care about battery, I'm probably only gonna run that 90 hertz if I'm plugged in or, like I'm never gonna do it when I'm out and about. Oh really, okay. Even for like a 2D game, probably. Oh, oh okay, hmm, yeah. interesting. Call yeah. me old fashioned. Uh, there's different ways I, to use it. I mean, I think that's that's what I'm starting to see is that people use it in different ways. So that's why, you know, when somebody like Jeff is just like, oh yeah, Windows on handheld suck. Well, I'm like, well, sometimes there's different ways to use it. Right? And and like having used a bunch of these, a couple of these Windows handhelds now pretty extensively, I, I like they are, 
they are fiddly in a way that the Steam Deck isn't. Like you can make the Steam Deck a fiddly experience if you want. Right, which is great. Yeah, you, yeah. Can, you can get into the desktop. You can, you know, install Emu Deck. You can do yeah. mod it to the to your heart's content kind of thing. You can have it set up <laughs> to install games from Battle.net yeah. and EGS and Origin and Ubi and GOG and all the different places. There's this thing called Lutris that you log into your different accounts now, mm -hmm. and it says, okay, these games will work, and it'll download the right versions of Wine. There's another thing called uh, Steam SGD Boop which hooks into the Steam Grid database, which is a database of oh, okay. all the different art, uh, the, like thumbnail sizes for the art. Gotta get it. It'll take all of your non-Steam games and automatically grab images oh. so that they look pretty and look like real games in nice. your non-Steam games section. It's, it's convenient. You don't have to do any of that. Yeah, you don't yeah. Want the to. most part, you, you turn this on at first boot, and the installation process, a breeze. It's easy, you know, and then the access to your library, it's right there. The store, configuration, oh, it's just, it's just so easy. Well, it, it's it's console like. That's it, why a lot of people call it a console, you know, because it is more it, it is. on the spectrum of PC to console. It is closer to a console for sure. And it's a fixed hardware platform, so that developers, you know, developers send builds to to Valve. They say, hey, we want you to check this out, see if you think it's good for the Steam Deck. They run some tests on it. They check performance. They check for things like text size and glyph usage and all of that. Mm -hmm. The glyphs meaning the little icons they use for the A B X Y buttons. Mm -hmm. And if you pass they put a green badge on your game in the Steam store. And when you see that, you know that it's probably gonna be okay. I, I have there been burned. exceptions. Yeah, I've definitely yeah. been burned both ways, where I'm like, oh, it hasn't passed, but it, it plays just fine. Or it's got the green check mark, and I'm like, oh no, how did they not catch this problem? Yeah, and, so, and it, not like, perfect. it's an imperfect system, but, but it's on, better than what you get on the other side, which is, well, I don't know. good I'm, luck, buddy. No, but on Windows, it'll, it'll run everything. It's Windows, but, the benefit, it will run everything, but will it run it in a performant way that you can run it on the APU and you get a good yeah. gaming experience? On the Steam Deck, it's going to probably have a, a like, Cyber, like Cyberpunk Hat does, mm. have a preset set of settings that runs automatically on the Steam Deck. True. On the Windows machines, you have to figure that out yourself. Uh, not always. Some of them launch and, you know, kind of pre-configure something in there, you know. And they, but that's why I love the PC. I get to go into the settings and, and tinker with stuff, so. Sometimes I just want to play games, uh, man. Yeah, yeah, okay. Well, some, sometimes the settings are the game, man. Some, sometimes the settings are the game. No, 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 oh my god. Sometimes tuning performance is the game. No, no, but, but you're right. On first boot, on, a, on these Windows devices, you have to install Windows, which, you know, it, it Wait, takes... they don't come with Windows? No, 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 I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Oh. You have to go through the Windows installer configuration, right? Oh, so it's don't like... worry, your files are fine. We're not doing anything bad to them. <laughs> well, we got you. Yeah, well, but that, that's, yeah, yeah no. It, it's like, oh, okay, you turn it on. It's like Windows 11, hello to the installation. So you, you have to you have to be comfortable going through a major OS installation. And then on top of that, uh, yeah, you have a front-end launcher that a lot of these come with, we'll, we'll talk about in a second. Oh, yeah. uh, but then you also have to worry about, okay, is Windows updated? Is uh, the apps in the Microsoft Store updated? Is the front-end launcher updated? The Asus in particular updates through the front-end launcher and also a separate app called My Asus. So, yes, Can definitely you... definitely more fiddly. <laughs> then you got to go out and install Steam, you know, which uh, you can do through the front-end launcher sometimes. Like, it's, it's easier to do it that way. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, it, it's Windows. You literally have to go out. It's a clean install other than the front-end launcher and my Asus stuff, so. Whereas the Steam Deck, you turn it on, yeah. you point your Steam app on your phone's camera at the at the QR code, and it's like, oh, hey, Log I know in. you. Yeah, you're yeah. logged in, you're good to go. But it's also, I don't know, it's one of those, uh, you know, positives and weaknesses of a console versus a PC. I, that's why I love the PC. Sure, a console is so easy, you just plug it in and you just play, right? But that's why I love the PC, because you can do whatever the hell you want with it. And I am comfortable installing Windows on it. I'm, I'm intrigued by this idea of a console what plays PC games. <laughs> so, okay, can we talk about the front end launchers now? Uh, yeah. We're, yeah. we're there. I, I cannot, I, for the most part, defend the front end launchers that are on most it's of these devices. It's trash fire city in the front end launcher department. It's a spectrum, right? Because I, I feel like the IO Neo uh, launcher, the version two that, that I have here on the, the Kuhn, yeah. is actually serviceable. It's fine. It's not. It's not great. I didn't spend any significant time with it, but it yeah. seems better than either the one on the Ally or the Legion. <sighs> the Legion one, yeah. The Legion, yeah. I don't know. I, the Legion one is personally my uh, least favorite one. The Ally one has been patched. I mean, they've all been patched 
you know, and updated and stuff, but like you can get stuff done. I think the biggest pain point though is that sure you can install, there's a quick easy button to install Steam, right? Yeah. Oh, okay, hey, you can install Steam from the front end launcher if you want to, uh, but most of the time the front end launcher is reading the games that you have installed. So you still have to go into Steam, install the games, things like that. Uh, where, I mean, you, you, you just have your library. It's installed or it's not, you see it on the Steam Deck. Here, it's only, that front end launcher is only reading games that are already installed. So you, you still have to kind of work around it's that. It's an unnecessary know. level of abstraction. But like, there's no way around it though. I, I, there, is there, or I mean, unless, yeah. is there a way like around 90 that? Like 90% of games on PC are sold on Steam. Like just launch straight into big picture and let people who want to install other well, stuff. Well, but that's the thing is that you can do that, right? I, and I, and I, I, yeah, and actually I do that. I say, hey, you know what? <laughs> don't don't install to the front end launcher. Just go straight into big picture mode. And for the most part, as long as it's reading the inputs okay, then it's completely fine. Well, so so the audience here at the P, on the PC World channel knows how to change defaults, right? Yeah. But these are devices that are going to normal. Jeff Grubb is a normal dude. No, I wouldn't call him normal. He's a, he's an amazing guy. He's okay. not normal. He, he is he is he is an awesome, <laughs> just a <laughs> luscious mane of hair. Yeah, yeah. But he's a guy who likes the defaults, who rides the default train. Okay, right. Yeah. yeah. And and ninety percent of people plus are going to ride the default train. It is a, it's, it's a ton of work. I'm sure it's a lot of work, but yeah, I can't Look, I can't defend these launchers I mean, that great. And so. just to be clear, this isn't on the vendors. This is on Microsoft for not fulfilling this need. This is something that the Xbox app on the on the devices should be able to fulfill that need. Though, and they don't. <laughs> to be fair, though, I bet even if Windows did come with a, a you know its own default launcher or a slim down version or something, some of these device manufacturers would probably try to have their own launcher still. Of course, yeah. So, but like license yeah. GOG Galaxy, that that'll talk to all the different platforms and let you see all your games in one yeah, place. Yeah. There's a bazillion different options. Now, there were a couple high points. For the Windows device. On the Windows devices. Okay, yes. The little pop-out menu on the on the Asus mm -hmm. handheld, mm -hmm. pretty good. Pretty good. You know, it, it's gotten there. At first, it didn't have things like battery icon status that and things like bad. that. That seems bad. So, yeah, it, it's but, gotten there. But, like, I could change my brightness. Yeah. I wish that there was a button End to turn tasks, off all you know. the LEDs. That would have been nice. Oh, there, there is. You have, But it's not by default. I think you have to go in and change the Defaults tile. matter, Adam. Yeah. Defaults do matter. Um, the, the other thing that's missing from all of these Windows devices is a button that will launch, that will pop up the big screen display, either the Xbox button or the Steam button or whatever. There's no, you can buy them by in default. many cases. Yeah, yeah, by default, yeah. <laughs> but typically there's a hardware button that's hard encoded to launch their crappy front end UI that that doesn't do the thing that I want it to do, but yeah. I really just want to launch the Steam in interface or the Xbox interface yeah. or whatever. I might. actually do, I do a lot of uh, voice chat through uh, Xbox Live, and yeah, that's always a pain point <laughs> to be like, oh, I gotta hurry and like launch, at, you know, the, the game bar or yeah, whatever. Hit Win plus G on yeah, your on-screen yeah, keyboard. Out that's some a way. great experience. <laughs> um, uh, so, so yeah, like I think, I think that on one hand you have. On those Windows side, you have this wide variety of performance options, which is good and exciting. And sizes and uh, like price points. I mean, it, 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 it's it's varying. I, I love the size of the Ally. The Ally, it, it, it's comfortable. You can hold it for a long time. Yep. You can lay in bed and it's comfortable to hold. You that, can, you you can plug into an external dock. Uh, you know, That's madness. I know, I know. Some handhelds have like Oculink ports, so expandability options in a way that you can't do on the Steam Deck. Well, look, I saw a thing on Reddit where a guy I know. took the M2 slot and put an external actually, GPU yeah. into that. I don't, but I that don't person like that, is yeah. also crazy. <laughs> he, is, so, he is crazy, but he's awesome. Yeah, so, I love you, Brett. <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's... For me, it's like fit and finish stuff is what it boils down to. When I and ease of use, yeah, yeah. yeah when I'm yeah. playing Bellatro at night in bed, and I'm like, oh, I got to go to sleep now. It's time to close my eyes. I hit the power button on the Steam Deck. I don't have to worry about saving my game. The state suspends. I close it. I put it down. There's no annoying blinking lights on it as I'm charging. Like the the Ally, if you plug in a power connector, it doesn't like the the sticks flash purple the entire time. There, the, there was no easy way to turn the lights off in general. I mean, defaults again. <laughs> uh, it's it's just, and then sometimes you'd suspend and resume and the games would die in the interim, which means that like a game like Vampire Survivors or, or Deep, Rock, uh, Deep Rock Survivors, that's like a, one, of these, one of these new like Steam Deck era games that are, are long sessions that you can't save in between are designed to be suspended. You can't play on these devices, which sucks. <sighs> so 
I completely agree, and I, I, I like that pain point of suspend and resume. I mean, you want it to work like a switch. You want it to work like yeah. a, a normal or, handheld device. Or an Xbox or a PS5 at this point, too. Also, will save state in the games when you pause, if you yeah. have the settings. Yeah, I, I don't know, but some people still are, you know. But yes, the Steam Deck, you hit that power button, you, you turn it back on, for the most part, you feel like, oh, you know, it's gonna wake from sleep just like a Nintendo Switch, for the most part. Uh, I cannot defend that on the handhelds. Yes, there are problems with sleep and resume. It does not work exactly the way you want it to. There are definitely downsides. I can see how, the, how that can be annoying, and I can see, and that is one of the major pain points from Jeff Grubb. Like, I, I totally get that. Like, I expect a handheld PC gaming console device. Yeah. It's a lot of adjectives yeah, yeah. there. But, like, I expect this to behave like my other handhelds, like the Switch and the 3DS and the DS. But it's a PC. And the, the weird thing is, I've never had a problem with it. You know uh -huh. why? Because my PCs, I shut them down when I'm done with them. I have always been somebody who shuts down your PC when you're done with it. At the end of the day, when I, I step away from my work machine, shut it all the way down. When I'm done playing a game, I shut it all the way down, the, the whole system. So, so some, I, it is not a problem for me. I just, I just shut the whole thing down. That's just, it's just how I use it. So it's, it's like I get, the, I get the problem for people who want to use it that way. I just never use it that let way. Me, let me give you a hypothetical here. Okay. I hand my Steam Deck to someone to play a game yesterday in my house, a non-technical person, a normie, <laughs> if you will. Yeah. And they're playing the game. When they get done, they say, oh, how do I turn this off? I say, you hit the power button on the top and they hit the power button on the top and the screen goes off and the device turns off and it's off for all intents and purposes. It's off in the same way that my phone is when I press the power button on the top of my phone or my iPad is on the, when I turn that off. Or my laptop is when I close the lid. There's no reason these devices can't do that. I know, even on console games though, I, I, don't, I don't turn it all the way off, but I, I, I stop the application, I stop the game. <laughs> I'm like a Brad Shoemaker. When I'm done with a game, mm. I don't trust it to, to sleep and resume anyway. Even if it does work great, it's just not how I use it. I always shut down the thing. See, I have my console set to power all the way off because I use them infrequently enough that I don't want vampire oh, energy. Got it, got it. But got that's it. a that's an energy. Like yeah, yeah, when yeah, I'm yeah, when yeah. I'm playing something, when I'm when I dig into Ragnarok or something, I'll flip that switch so it stays yeah. on for the two weeks that I'm playing that game. So I, I'm I'm curious. Yeah, I'm curious to see how many people like shut down all the way. People are gonna have feelings. Yeah, I bet yeah, a lot yeah, of people yeah. leave their stuff on all the time. I, no, no, no. I, and I totally like desktop PCs. Like laptops are the one exception where I'm like, okay, you close the lid for the most part. But then a lot of times, I don't know, you open it up and it's like, oh, it got stuck on some update or something. So I, and laptops, actually, most of the time, I do shut it all the way down too. See, I spend a pretty ludicrous amount of time with each new PC getting sleep working the way I want, so that it actually goes to sleep when I turn everything off. When I when I, just I walk don't trust away from the it. desk, I don't know. I just never trust it. I don't know. I'm curious to hear what other people think. I'm curious to hear how other people use their PC. And I, I think once again, it, that's what it boils down to. I I see these as PCs, not as handheld gaming devices. Yeah, for me, this is a device yeah. that I play games on. And I, and I like, while I, I, and full disclosure, I have an open source podcast, right? I'm, I'm comfortable on a Linux desktop. I'm comfortable with the Linux command it's true. line. It's true. I know how to, I know how to install flat packs, and I've been using Arch for longer than the Steam Deck's been around. <laughs> so like, it's a, it's an environment that I'm familiar with and mm -hmm. I feel comfortable in. I think that the work that Valve's done with Proton is is one of the better open source projects oh, that's yeah. happened in the last 10, 10 years. They're, I mean, not 10, five years, let's say. They're, they're also doing work on the driver level that is impactful in a way that it, like, it fixes problems with Windows drivers in some cases. Like, there, there are oh, yeah. PC game developers I know that are shipping VX, VKDX on Windows titles because it fixes problems with AMD's Windows drivers. I, yeah, I, I, the the excitement that ha, the, that Valve has been able to do with the Steam Deck, I mean, it has helped the whole ecosystem. It created the ecosystem. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So I, I'm I'm totally on board. I, but what I'm not on board is with people saying Windows should not exist on these devices, because I think it boils down <laughs> to the use case and uh, you know and the way that you think about the device and how how comfortable you are fiddling with it. And I, I get that. I get that. But also, I do hope in the future, Microsoft will just make it better. I, I mean, just to be yeah. clear, I don't think this is a problem with the manufacturers. I mean, you could argue that the front ends are janky and that maybe they should focus their efforts elsewhere. I, I still think everything that we've talked about that's a negative pretty much is on Microsoft, not on the individual right. vendors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah like, sure. like this is, this is, there's a clear use case for this category. If Microsoft and the OEMs lean into it, we'll see it continue to grow. Um, otherwise, if they don't, then 
people will write a fork of, of Steam OS because it's open source. You could just I mean, there is repos. There's ho hollow ISO. Ho hollow, yeah, yeah, hollow ISO yeah. is out there. Yep. It's not quite shippable for like consumer goods yet. Somebody's going to do it this year, I, I think, for sure. Yeah, I'd be curious. And and here's the thing: those devices will be fifty or hundred dollars cheaper than the Windows devices. So it's in Microsoft's interest to make this this Windows side a better experience Definitely. if they want to continue having a piece of this market. Definitely. So yeah. well, yeah. yeah well, well, thank you for for going through that. You know, hopefully it wasn't too painful. Well, I guess uh. the, the last question I have. Could you ever see yourself coming back and using some of these? You're like, ah, hey, you know what? Or, or you just, you just good. You're, you, I, like, you're fine. I get, I get the ally, but I think, you know, I think I would take the, I think I would take the Steam Deck and the battery life over the high, the, the higher resolution screen. I don't think I can tell the difference in the resolution screen with my almost fifty year old. I mean, eyes. especially not the sixteen hundred p. Like I, I don't. No, fully, that's madness. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. and and like it's overkill and it, it's a battery problem. Like there's a. A hard pass on the Legion yeah, yeah. for me. <laughs> I think the Allies are a really compelling piece of hardware. The battery life was a little lacking when you have the the refresh rate on the on the display cranked all the way up. But but like being able to stream my good looking PC games at 1080p uh, with at 120 hertz, it's pretty awesome. Is it enough that I'm going to buy two devices? No, I'm going to buy the one that I can take on the long plane ride and the battery will last the whole time. I guess I'm yeah. the only weirdo that likes to have multiple devices. You know? Sorry, I'm going to side with the <laughs> with the luscious locks of Jeff Grubb on this one. <laughs> All right, well, yeah, we, we need to have uh, Jeff in the studio or, you know, like on on the podcast or something to, to yeah. kind of uh, debate this out. So, Jeff, you, you've, you've heard... You've heard our, our takes. Hopefully, you watched this video. Uh, I, I want you to come on and, and give your take as, again as well. So, uh, thanks thanks for going through this journey. This was uh, fun. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's I it's, I love getting a glimpse into a new category. It's always exciting. And this is and, a hot new category. And, well, and this is the time when everybody's trying. Like Lenovo did this thing. I don't like it per se, necessarily. The thing with the mouse on the on the oh, yeah. on the trigger. It's goofy and weird, but it's exciting that people are trying goofy and weird stuff in this category. Like, sure. that, like we need more of that in PCs, not less. For so. sure. Uh, and if you agree, let us know down in the comments. Uh, you know, if you don't agree, I guess you're going to let us know in the comments either. Yeah, either way. Whatever. While you're there, be sure to subscribe for the next PC hardware or software video that we have coming your way. Until then, thank you, Will, and we will see everybody later.